state championship this year, as all of our coaches have been. We, we try to make sure that we are what we say we are clinical champions. If there are any ex Springtown coaches standing up, if there are any ex Springtown coaches in the room, <laughs> just like when they work for me, it's like the same thing. Anyway, Brent, I'm going to turn it over to you, brother. Hey. Uh, gentlemen, I just want to first uh, say it's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to get to be here. I've been to many of these conferences throughout the years. The fact that I'm speaking is just beyond me up for the privilege. Um, I come from a little bit different perspective. Maybe some of you with smaller programs uh, are in, you know, have a coaching staff like me, kind of, of well, we, we all double our salary every year, and uh, we don't seem to be getting anywhere, right? So... Um, you know, we get a lot of dads, we get a lot of volunteers, we try, but the, the question I always took on when we got into, the, into it was how, um, how do we compete against schools like Blum and Sterling City and Calvert and Rankin? How are you able to go out there and be competitive? And that was when I, when I was, I'm a goal guy. I said, you know what? We think we're pretty good playing our little D2 football in Central Texas in our league that's, you know, not, but I want, and we're great within our little wheelhouse, but how do I go out and take that same thing and be successful? And everybody, there are variations. Of, my variation of the success was the first year we went out and played Sterling City out, you know, in West Texas was we were a 45 point dog. And I just said, well, let's just see, if, are we really a 45 point dog or not? You know, we, we, we're up 20 to 7 at half, and we can't hold on, but we lose a close game at the end. But the better team won, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, and we've been, we've been blessed to take on uh, some pretty good quality caliber football teams. And way back at the beginning, part of what I had to figure out was how do you do that not having the resources. I don't have three or four coaches. I don't, I get my kids, if I'm lucky, for eight or nine hours a week. That's it. I don't, I didn't even have a weight room until last year. And now it's, that's a shed with some donated equipment. And it's hot. It's 114 degrees in there, you know, most time. And, you know, that, so, you know, how, what do you, how do you get there? And so what I'm going to share with you today is my aspect. And by the way, if everything I want to talk about is right there. You don't need, there's no handout. It's going to be up forever. Uh, you go there, you're going to get all the talking points written down, broken down, everything, almost, plus more. There's no way I'm going to cover today. I'm going to get off script. I'm bad. I'm not good. That's why I did this. Um, so you can find all the coaching points up there. So if we can go to the next slide, Coach. Uh, by the way, I want to remind everybody in the room, the last guy with the chalk wins. So if we have to do any board work at the end, you know, I'm, I'm a relative genius, so and I have the chalk, so I'll win. Next one, Coach. Um, now this is, this is interesting. So I, I go back to why I really believe in what the O'Brien has done for our program is, and we're going to play this clip, and I want you all to watch when we play this clip. Go ahead, Coach, and play it, and you're going to have to mute it because there's some woman with a cowbell that's going to kill us. Uh, uh, so there you go, make it full screen. You can. Oh, you can't get full screen? Double click on it. Double click on the actual coach, yeah. Just double click on the thing there itself. Full screen. Huh? All right, now we have to go ahead, coach, quick. All right, so but, but stop real quick, Coach, so I can give you a little, oh, yeah. <laughs> I want you to know, this is a junior high. This junior high has got a bunch of 13, 11, 12, and 13-year-olds. You see how big these guys are over here? That's not somebody's varsity. That's the feast 14 and 15-year-olds. That little bunch of rugrats won that game 21 to 20. And they did it running that formation in five plays. And they did it because this formation, what I'm going to step you through today, is not about being the biggest. It's not about being the fastest. But it is about being disciplined and being able to just simply be perfect at what you're asked to do. 
And, and, and we're not asking a lot of kids to do much. Roll the clip. This is just their drive against a bunch of giants. And by the way, it's not sexy. By the way, that, that running back was running for his life. He wasn't running because he's a good running back. He just he said, they're so big, coach. And I think one of the prouder moments is this, this guy here is our coach. I, I'm not even, you know, I'm, I'm over there on the sideline. This is, I think, the only game that I ever showed up on the sideline just to kind of give some support because I knew they were going to be huge. But if you'll notice, we ran the same play. We got in two different formations. We ran the same play every time. We blocked it four different ways because of the way they lined up. There's the keep them honest pass before you just run it down their throat one more time. Now, and Coach, you can go on to the next slide. It's, thank you. I hope we don't have to. We won't, I won't maximize the screen for it. Okay, you see, it's unique in the sense that nobody else runs it. And I was, uh, Coach Sisko was really complimentary after we played uh, Sterling City. And he said, game planning for it was very difficult because we've never seen it before. And it was very difficult. And he said, when we tried to run it in practice, and what we saw in practice versus what we did in the game was light years apart. And that's true, that's what I found. Uh, I don't like, again, don't need real great athletes, but I need guys that can think. And you've got a lot of heart. I think all offenses need to be able to reverse the field. They need to go power. They need to go a little, and they need to be able to do play action pass. Um, and in games like that one, I was just explaining, you got to be able to have clock management. So if you've got a big high power offense, and I'm going to, and I agree with coach, possessions are everything. I've had an entire game we played, uh, when we played, uh, I was in that Sterling City game. We, it, we drove the length of, the, of a field and took up almost an entire quarter doing it. Uh, and, and one thing that I've, I added on there, I want players to be able to play from a private school perspective at the next level. And a lot of coaches say, well, you play six-man football, you can't go, yeah, that doesn't translate to the next level. Or I've got kids, well, yeah, it translates if you're a receiver, and that's it. You know, and that's all we got, slot receivers and corners. And I can tell you that I'm going to have – Two years from now, a kid that's going to either be D1 or D2 that's going to be playing from the offensive line perspective, he's going to have good film doing it. He already has good film. And I've got kids that are going to be able to play at that level from the running back perspective because they can run behind blocks and they can make the cuts that are needed to be made. And i got two that just went D2 this year. And neither, you know. So, again, my, my thing is to try to figure out how kids can fulfill some of their – and not to mention – all of them are on partial scholarships. That's all, but partial is better than, than none. And that's kind of one of those things that we're, we're trying to do. And that's one of the things that I think that it, this helps us accomplish. Next slide, Coach. Okay, just a little bit about the backfield. And I'm going to hit through these pretty quickly. Um, the, the, the Q. All right, the, Q, the quarterback for us is a fullback. This is a two fullback offense. And by the way, uh, we'll do it here in a second. Uh, you know, he needs to be, a, he, we audible. About 60-70% um, of our plays will be audible at the line of scrimmage. Now, he knows what he's audibling into, but he needs to know, he may as well read, he needs to make a look. We set up pretty much in two formations, which we'll go over in a second, but the reason by setting up uh, kind of the same way every time is you don't know what's coming at you, right? Because it's a little bit harder to game plan for when you're, when you're coming at um, he needs to, you. Know, he needs to be able to catch that snap, because that snap and we'll go through is also a little bit of difficulty at times. And, uh, and he, he's just got to be a physical kid. So these, these clips that we're going to show right now, uh, this first one's against Rankin. And watch my cue here. Um, by the way, he's, he's, our, he's our middle. You don't need to. Yeah, but that's him right there. Now, two, a couple of things here. Watch the snaps bad. He goes, boom. Mm. And that, by the way, that guy chasing him right there, that kid, that kid that's running the ball, he's a, he's a sub-4-7 guy, laser. He just got caught. That was the only time all year he got caught. Like, wow. That's, that, was, that was like second play of the game. 
that's when you know, wow, they got some athletes on that side of the field. By, by the way, we, didn't, we weren't able to exchange film for whatever reason, and we need, need not know about him. Um, he, he was quite an athlete. They had a lot of athletes. Um, uh, this one here, again, watch the cue. Uh, what's interesting, if you can pause it, Coach, what's going to happen is we're going to hand what we call we bring this, this fullback down into an um, you know, offset position. But he misses his block, right? And what you're going to learn as we go through this, we don't have a lot of set people we're blocking on every given play. What we do is we coach them on, you know, what's supposed to happen, and then we practice what ends up happening sometimes. So this defensive end is just too much to handle. This is Calvert, by the way. And that boy on the outside out there, man, he's a man. He's not a boy. That, that is a huge man. And watch what he does to my, my, my fullback, who's a pretty good athlete himself, and he just pumps him. And so, up, oh, coach, go back. Yeah. And just hit play. There you go. So the cue has got to then take the ball and quickly get his head back around. But bang, got it. Got it. Now we get outnumbered, right? Because the guy we got two guys blocking one, which gives the defense in the hop. Anytime, that's just not good. So on to the next, um, the running backs. So we've got. Now this is kind of bad. This is really more one yard to one and a half yards over, and he sits about six yards back. The cue is going to line up four yards, three and a half to no more than four yards from the, uh, from the center, and he's going to be offset. We'll go over that here in a second with a snap. Uh, this space in, but we'll get to the lineman a little bit later. But right here between these two, we call them the inside receiver and the outside receiver. It's where the fullback's going to line up. He's going to be about three and a half yards off. When we, when we get into a more power set, we'll move that fullback over and we'll set him offset the outside receiver. And that's really, those are, that's it. Nothing crazy. Um, well, when we get to the lineman here, I'll explain why we set the lineman the way we do. Um, the running back, and this is one thing that we had to work on and drill into their head. It is a downhill running attack. It's one foot in the ground and go. You're, it, it is, I like to liken it to the kids. I'm like, go watch the, go watch the NFL. You see those guys spending any time juking around, doing anything? And then there's always one kid that comes up with Barry Sanders. I said, well, when you give me Barry Sanders, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come back and talk. But, you know, outside of that, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be one foot in the ground and go. Um, uh, he's got to follow the block of the queue. He doesn't need to be a bright kid. His only job is to follow the cue through the hole. Again, the cue decides where the play is going. And then the play is decided where it's going post-snap, not pre-snap. So that's, you know, that's one of those things. Uh, uh, the fullback himself, you know, we'd rather him be a blocker. In, in the perfect world, this guy has got speed and size because we're going to counter with him. But the counters, if, if, you got a, if you got a quick kid on that counter, you're going to break it for a touchdown more often. If he's just a bigger kid and he's not able to, he's a better blocker, okay, he's only going to get eight or nine yards as opposed to being able to block it. But, you know, again, this, this was designed with the fact that I have 12 kids, six of which can play football, three we're hoping can play football, and three we just, you know, it's great. They can hold a dummy. Uh, so, the, uh, you know, that's on the next slide, Coach. All right, the snap, and I still frame this. This is the key to the O'Brien. Everybody wants to beat us by trying to come across the A-gap. And by the way, you'll see there's a big, we'll talk about when we get the lineman splits, why there's a big gap. I love the Jaybird. I, when I started looking at offenses, I thought the Jaybird was the best offense ever. Problem is, I got into Jaybird, and I didn't have big offensive linemen, and I couldn't move anybody. I was getting crushed. So I said, well, I also spread doesn't work because you can't block with spread. It's not effectively, and it's asking for too much space. So that three-yard gap, it provides some space for the smaller guy to make the block, but it also provides this big open A gap. And I can't tell you how many people think that they can bust through that A gap. But the reason they can't is that snap is going to be snapped at the running back. That's the aim point. We're going to snap it right there, and the cue's going to catch it on the run. Now, the funniest thing, I, I wish Coach Aldridge was here. <laughs> he, was, 
he, he pre-game went and had a pre-game conference with the officials and said he's going to take the ball. His quarterback's going to go in motion and catch the ball, and he's going to flip it. It's, in, it's a legal procedure. And first play of the game, got kid catches the ball, flips it, whistles, legal procedure. What? So I, you know, call my timeout and get the white hat over there, and I said, okay, so if I start him over there at the wide receiver spot and I put him in motion and I snap him the ball, is that a legit play? He goes, well, yeah. I said, well, my guy's not in that good a shape. Can we just start him like right, you know, right here and put him in motion? And he said, he said, he didn't say anything, but I didn't get any more illegal procedure plays after that. The, big, the biggest thing is the cue, and this is what will happen with your younger players, is he's going to start, because he's got to get up the field to make a block, he'll start making that motion toward the line of scrimmage and stay, instead of staying lateral. And now that is a, you know, a procedure call. So he has to be lateral, but he'll catch that ball, and it, that, that it's, it's, you know, we've got different types of, that snap is usually not too fast, but it's, it's still not a dead snap, and we catch it out front. But the reason why is we're across, we catch the ball past the A-gap, moving. If you're going to try to catch it, now that inside receiver, all he's got to do is make sure that you don't have penetration really this way, right? I mean, otherwise, if it's up the field penetration, great. Walk, ride him out. I don't care. Let him go. You know? So that's that's why you know people trying to beat it through the A gap. Uh, and I will tell you that there are teams that I mean Rankin, God, that kid 23. <laughs> he, and we had a kid that, that was but you know. So what we have there are ways to counter it. Now the way we counter it, if it's too big and this guy's too slow, we shorten the gaps, of course. And the other thing we do is uh, we run more counters. But anyway, next slide, coach. <coughs> Um, I don't know, we should run the top play here. These are just some running backs. This is what we're looking at. This is top left is, is uh, just a standard sweep play that we have. Watch him follow the cue. See how he, he bubbles around the outside because the cue bubbled around the outside? Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the, this one here, Coach, right here. Another running back play. Watch him follow. His, his job is to follow the cue. And, you know, wherever the cue goes, we're hammering down. So we've hammered down. This is against Rankin. He follows the cue and makes one cut off that block. And, hey, we're not stopping, turning, spinning. You are, you are putting a foot in the ground, you're putting your head down, and you're gone. That's it. If I find, and, and, that, and it's real easy, you want to play, you put a head down and go get me three more. I don't need you. Uh, and really, I, I'll tell you flat out, I had the I, I kid that rushed for 1,600 yards his junior year came back, was going to come back for his senior year and was going to get benched because the kid behind him that was a sophomore the previous year was willing to put his foot in the ground and get upfield. And I had that conversation with him, and he decided he needed to move on to a different place and didn't come back in the, in the fall. And that wasn't because I was trying to, but I was letting him know that after two years of trying to get him to do what the, what the you know, the offense asked of him, he's not doing it. And for us to be successful against these bigger power programs, I don't need a five-yard loss because you decided that you were smarter than the blocking scheme. Uh, fullback over here. Uh, keep going, Coach. That's good. We'll just keep going. I'm not going to worry. Uh, well, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see a counter later on. We're good. Um, so here's, here's the offensive line. Center does not – my center one year was like 115 pounds, literally. 115 pounds center. But he could snap that ball perfect every time. And you know what? He doesn't need to block. Because the defensive end you're going to put over here that you think is faster than all get out and you think is going to get there is never going to. So what, what you're going to do, which is really fun to watch, is you're going to bring two of them. Because if one guy couldn't get him from the outside, you're going to put two of them over there. Like, that's going to somehow magically make it happen. But, I mean, I say this simply because that's what we've seen happen. And or you're going to try to stack two guys through the A game. And they're going to trip over each other as you just go run, run around the outside. So, the, um, again, the cue's four off. There's his aim point. Uh, so what we ask our inside and outside receivers when we're dealing this with our junior high is just stand there. And we ask our varsity not to do this because it would look really bad. Put your arms out like that, right? And if your fingers are touching, that's the amount of gap that you, that you need. <clears throat> So that's, uh, go ahead, next slide, coach. 
All right. Blocking is everything. And I think it's everything in any type of football, but especially, you know, this is, this is, a, this is a power offense with play action passing out of it. That's what we are. We are not, uh, we spend a lot of time on blocking. God, gap on down. You're basic God blocking. I like to tell all my, you know, we have no atheists, right? Nobody's allowed to be an atheist on the field. Um, you know, so uh, that's on your own time. So what we want to do is, since we're not worried about this backside defensive end, since we're coming across so fast into, well, we're going to run to the, to the strong side of the formation, we're going to ask this center to try to get over to that backside corner. I'm just throwing up. I can run this against the three. You know, it don't make a difference what you throw at it. Three, three. This is your standard. I, I guess I got a four man front down here. Um, we're going to block the A gap. So gap on down. Right here, this guy, you know, the outside receiver is going to go here, and then we're going to block with the fullback on the end here. Now, we tell our, we tell this guy on the outside, this fullback, I don't care what you do, but you do not stand in the hole. You either kick him out or you kick him in. But you do not sit there. And I never want to see the, the cue does not need to see the numbers on your back. You need to be pushing one way or the other, and we're going to cut inside that that block. And the cue's job. And this is what's really the, the hard part of the coaching is he's got to make a blind pitch. He's got to catch that ball and pretty much throw it to an area out there. And that's why it's a lot of reps because his head has to be back around in time to see where he's going. And if you saw earlier, remember the cue kind of bubbled around and in that, that, uh, that hooked. Well, again, this is all post snap. We have not decided where we're going until, we've, until we're post snap. Uh, stick and scrape. So if we see that we're at that that they're going to play loose on the linebackers and they're not going to bring anybody real tight. We'll chip the, the outside, give this three back some time to help out. The whole reason we hammer like this here, which we, is because we can't, because you put a stud up there and we can't handle it. It's going to take two of our guys to handle it. So if we, if, if we can, we'll, we'll, we'll chip him right there and then we'll go to the linebacker and then we'll you know, let the three back hit him. And the one's going to take, you know, corner or, or he's going to either bubble or he's going to go through up through the inside. Most people are going to keep the edge, so we're going to go up inside of that. Um, right here, what we call love and hate, we'll, we'll hammer, we call this hammer, I don't even know why I came, where that came from, but anyway, uh, we come into this formation here. These two guys are going to basically both block this in, and then we're going to read that linebacker. Right? And we're going to find out whether or not he's going to go over the top or he's going to come through the gap. If he comes through the gap, the outside receiver is going to take him. If he goes over the outside, this guy. And we rep that ad nauseum. You know, we used to have guys in drills, you know, one or the other. And we, and, and we, and we both. And, you know, if this guy can beat both of these guys, we're in trouble. I mean, we're just in trouble to begin with. So I, I, don't, I, don't have a, I don't have an offense where I can – to where the third guy needs to be involved in blocking one player in six-man football. Um, so the, the, this is a typical trap. I put the 4-2 on here because a lot of people ask, well, how, typically our trap's going to be against a 3-2, right? So we're going to pull the inside guy to block the backside defensive end. If you're in a 4-2, we're just going to simply block down, block down, we're going to pull the tackle or outside receiver. So we're, we, both these guys have to be able to pull. So, you know, that's, and we're, we're, what we're going to do is hand the ball uh, to the three back coming this way. And if you start, if, you know, we have people say, wherever the fullback goes, that's where the play's going. We'll fake, we'll have that guy go that way, and we'll still go out the other way and pitch it. And your middle, and your Mike Backer, you know, who's watching the, the, the fullback, goes with him, and he, we've got you outnumbered. So, um, you know, that, that's one of the, the things that, you know, just a little you can go ahead, coach. Uh, so here we go. We'll start with sweep. I'm going to run through them pretty quickly. Uh, this is the standard sweep play. We're going to pitch the ball. We're going to have this guy right here. He's going to hit. He knows how he cuts him in, so the cue bubbles around the outside, and we just go around that. That's against Rankin. Uh, this one here, they had better film than we did. They had really nice facilities. And all that good stuff. Um, so here we go. We hammer. Right, we're hammering into the formation. Again, same play. Now here comes the counter. This is the, where we hand it back to the fullback. 
because now everybody's got five in the box and they're coming this way. No more sweeps. We're not allowing that. And that guy makes a great tackle. And we need we needed two yards. Of, yeah, but that was a great tackle. But oftentimes we'll bust that tackle. Um, I think I, you know, somebody was talking about one-on-one -on -one tackling. You know, you got to be able to beat somebody one-on-one. -on -one. And there's the play action. And, you know, the one thing about the play action out of this, and I didn't get into the blocking, uh, as I forgot, is that, you know, because you're coming off the line to go at the guys that you're going to block, it's, you know, it's just another step to go into a route. So oftentimes they can't tell the difference between whether you're coming off the block or whether you're coming off for a, a pass. And if they put five guys in the box like that, we're going to throw the ball. I mean, this last year, uh, Feast, we played Feast in our division in the, in the, uh, the year before. Um, and they didn't, so they decided, well, you know what? We're not going to let them run the ball. We're going to put five in the box. I think the thought process was, well, they never throw the football. We threw for 280 yards and, you know, that's all we did. It was because you don't keep putting five in the box. We'll just take, you know, take what you give us. Um, go to the next next. Base plays, it's really, really basic. Uh, so the sweep is what we just talked about. Block down, block down, block out, kick out. And one thing we do tell the cue, uh, notice here that, the, that this is a lateral movement. It's not toward the line of scrimmage. We, it's very difficult. For some reason, the, I gotta come up with another word for lateral. I don't think young men nowadays know what lateral means. So, you know, if y'all can, anybody can help me on that one. That's the, that's, because that concept, that, that two yards right there from there to that point, as opposed from here to this point, blows their minds. Just absolutely. The, the, a 17 year old male can't make that jump. But you'll notice that the cue, after he makes the pitch, this really should be more lateral than that. He makes that pitch, he's getting his head around. And then, and the reason why there needs to be that little bit of separation is so that, because he's going faster and he doesn't have to pitch a ball, he gets a second to let the cue get in front of him. So that, but we want them both to be at the line of scrimmage at the same time. We tell our cue, we tell our cue, the running back should have his hand on the back of the, of the uh, running back by the time they get to the line of scrimmage. That's how fast we, when we're, when we're running it well. It's not gonna happen in your junior high. It's maybe somewhat at your JV, but by your varsity level, it should, you know, I can't believe I can say that. I mean. Three years ago, I could find, barely find football players. Anyway, next. Um, so the, the dive. Oh, here, just some sweep. Go on to the next. We've seen enough sweep, Coach. Go on to the next. Dive. Because um, I want to get to questions. And you can, I, I, by the way, all these plays are online. Plus, I put up, like, all the ranking and Calvert plays that we ran on Brian. And you can get all of those. Um, the dive. We don't run this one as much. We haven't. But you notice we're going to kick out. We're going to kick down. We're going to go through the middle with the um, with the and so go on to skip two slides, Coach. Counter. This is the bread. This is the play that kills people because the moment the moment you start shifting over to take away the gaps on on this side, we are going to we are going to exploit that. And so and I will we'll run some film on this in a second. What we'll do is that cue will come across. The snap will actually be more straight back as opposed to out in front because we found that the cue can't stop. He, 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 he overextends himself if he comes this way to be able to turn back. So this is one of the rare times where the center will snap it back. He just steps forward, catches it, pitches it, and heads back the other way. We're trap blocking, right? So we're going we're gonna, to you know, block down here. We're going to kick out. Cue's going to hit through here. Out, notice that the end is going to try to get to here. And my fullback... Last year's fullback decided this was a play he didn't have to do anything on. Honestly, I have film of this guy just standing there on the field. I, I just, like, man, that is horrible. That is bad coaching. Uh, but he's supposed to at least do something more than just stand still. Uh, he also is uh, on every defensive pass rush. So I think he felt like he needed, you know, time off. Um, so we do the same thing here. Uh, if we if we if we hammer him, uh, we'll actually do a shuttle. Just you know, it'll be a shuttle pass to the to the fullback coming back the other way. But we block it the exact same way. So if you uh, next slide, coach. So the top play is against Franken. There you go. 
Top plays against Rankin. We're going to hand it back to him right here. Oh, pardon me. Good shot, Coach. I did the wrong, uh, wrong one. Back up. Back up. <clears throat> I did it wrong. All right. So we're we're gonna we're gonna fake this way and come back the other way. So we're gonna you know we're gonna pull with the inside. Uh, head down with the and notice. One, two, three, four, four guys plus a guy over the top over here. Five guys to the right of the A gap. Okay. So obviously the sweep's been working pretty well because they, they're willing to put five guys to the right of the A gap. And by the way, that guy right there, 23, you don't ever want to face that player. By oh, man, he is something else. Uh, but uh, we went to watch them play Val Murray in the, in the uh, I guess, the playoffs because that was our off week, and he had a cast on. I would have loved to have played him with, a, with one arm. We didn't get to play him with one arm. I said, and they – beat Balmeray by 18. Number one, that's that number, that's that kid that was so fast right here. So these two kids, this kid set out of that Balmeray game for a quarter and a half. He went into the locker room. I said, why don't I get him in the, in the, in the, you know, the locker room for a quarter and a half and the other one with one arm? Jeez, no, it's, I'm not living right. I need to do a little more praying. Here we go. So uh, here, here we go. We go kick him out and you know, down the field. I'd liked it if he'd stayed outside of that block, but hey, you know, he, he still kept going forward. That's, that's what we want. Harris against Calvert. This will be the handoff up the middle to the three back. So that it will be that, that guy right there. We're gone. Everybody's going to look like we're going that way. Oh, no, it's the same one. Okay. So we're going back the other way. Again, Calvert put everybody to the right of the A gap. Um, reverse. I don't like this play. This works in junior high. It doesn't work in varsity low, so we don't. The idea is you, you hand it off because this end's going to suck down. And most varsity level programs are not going to, uh, they're going to be disciplined and they're going to keep that edge. So we really rarely run the reverse. I mean, if, you're, if, you, if we see that your end's really coming hard down this line of scrimmage, then we're going to hand it you know, on a reverse around it and we'll pull the inside uh, receiver. Uh, but more often than not, we're going to run the trap. Uh, two slides, Coach. Um, and then play action. And really the passing routes, and I'll spend a little bit on, on passing here. Uh, the, the passing routes are, are you know, whatever you want them to be. We'll send three out. If we feel as though you're, you're, you've got a good pass rush or we're worried about this, say, this particular guy rushing, then we'll keep somebody in the block. But the way we do it is that the cue is already sprinting to the right. If we make the cue the, the quarterback, he's already sprinting to the right. We're going to block inside. We're going to block it. We're going to block from this side over. If this backside defensive end's coming and we're sending three, that's the cue's man. He knows he needs to be playing out right. He knows that guy's coming after him and he needs to get rid of the ball. If we pitch it to the two back, then just trade positions. If we pitch it to the two back, then the uh, inside receiver, then the cue will block the guy coming in the A gap, or maybe we keep the one guy in and, and send two out. It really doesn't make a difference. Our passing is gonna change a bit game to game based upon whoever's personnel is. What we do know is that if, we're, if is that you can notice that these guys, they're kind of going out like they're blocking, they're quickly making their cut. And then we're gonna throw to, and that's the other thing about our cue. We, I started this with the basis that I don't go spread, or we will go spread if I have somebody who can throw the ball, but I was never blessed early on with a guy that could run and throw the football. I mean, you've got 12 players. You're lucky if you can. I, I mean, I used to tell people I've got somebody who can chunk the ball. You know, and if we can get it in the general direction, and that's the other thing. The reads are real easy out of this. One guy goes right, one guy goes left. Chunk it. Keep it to the outside shoulder. That, I mean, it's, it's not complex, but it, it works, right? I mean, there's nobody back because you got five in the box. The moment there are four in the box or anybody's backing up, we're running. We're coming right at you. Now, the, the, you know, the better programs, the better defenses that we face that have helped us perfect this, and go to the next slides, Coach. Um, go, just go. We don't have to watch this. Our, our really helped us with our drills. Go on. So we'll rep this time and time again. We just get... Uh, that's usually a coach snapping the ball. Sometimes we'll have uh, the actual center snap the ball. It doesn't make a difference. But we'll break our line separate from our, our backs. And that's why these backs will just be, we'll, you know, pitch, 
go, pitch, go, pitch, go. Sometimes we'll practice, and they, they run this way, and then the other set comes in, so we're just constantly in a circle. And we'll, we'll run through that, you know, a thousand times. But I mean, as many times in 10 minutes as we can. I'm not coaching, we're just repping, right? We don't spend any time coaching here, we just rep. Afterwards, after film, we might sit down with somebody and say, you know, this is what you need to do, this is your footwork, we just want more reps. Um, again, the aim point. Next uh, slide, Coach. Um, blocking drills. We'll set up defenders and we'll tell them. You know, th and this is what will happen, right? The good defenses, they'll start bringing stunts. And so we need to know how to block on the stunts. See, this guy right here, his first thought is going to be to block right here, right? He can't. He's got to aim. His aim point is to go out toward uh, this backer. And then if he sees this backer trying to uh, get through the B gap, slide over to the B. Has to. Because the Q who's coming around will not catch this guy. And I mean, time and time again, he's, because the Q can't see him fast enough. He, the Q can see that guy, but he can't see that guy. We have, we have guys coming across our face. So if I got a guy coming across our face and a guy coming, and we rep this, and a guy coming through the A gap, all right. You start to hit the guy across your face, but if you see the guy coming to it, you slide to the A gap. If, you, if, you're, if your job is to go out to this way and you see this guy coming across the face, you've got a, you've got a chip here before you move on because if we see, if we have A gap penetration. So, you know, this is just reps, just lots of reps. Next, next. Um, same thing, we'll blitz A gap. So we got a guy head up over the inside. Got a guy blitzing A-gap. Uh, and by the way, this could be out of a 4-2. It, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, you know, so we got to buy, so this guy's going to chip. He's going to slide to the A-gap. Outside receiver's got to block down. Q's got the, the linebacker on that side. So uh, here we go. We got some really people get creative with us. We got this guy shoots A. So we're going to block him that way. This guy comes here. We're going to block him that way. And now the Q's going to pick up the linebacker coming across on the backside. But we'll sit there time and time again in practice and just have these guys. And, you know, and, you know if we've all had a, you know, a nickel for every time, we said, but I thought, quit thinking. You know, just, just you know, read, read your cues. That's all you have to do. Every, everybody has their, and by the way, all of this is written down. So I know, uh, so I don't want to, I have limited time and I want to get y'all to lunch and go no. Next one, coach. All right, so there's my contact info. I'm more than willing at any given time uh, to go over this quirky little offense. By the way, it used to be a standard back in like the 50s and 60s. Um, and I, I only know of, I don't know, a couple of, a couple of folks that truly run it. Um, but I, it, to me, it's like I mentioned to you guys, I, I just think uh, it's a great offense to be able to uh, neutralize um, some of the better defenses that you might go up against, uh, especially if you're outmanned, uh, out-athleted, um, and that's, that's kind of how we go about it. Hey, and I'll answer any questions you have, and I can go over here and I, I got a chalkboard. Anybody have any questions? Or I, I don't want to hold you up for lunch or anything like that. I, I will tell you that this, um, that this offense is uh, – it, it does take a lot of repetition. It is, it, it, it's, that snap is not the easiest of snaps. That guy catching that ball with a dead pitch, and a lot of people will tell you that I don't want to risk, because when that pitch goes, if that pitch is off, the only person that knows it's a bad pitch is the running back who muffed it, who's already going the other direction. You've got a really high percentage chance of not getting uh, the, the, you know, the fumble recovery. But I will say this, in the last five years of, of running the offense, uh, we have lost uh, three balls to bad, to bad snaps. So, I mean, if you rep it, it's, it's not. Uh, and by the way, we've, we've had six fumbled snaps, but only three of them have we lost. So, it's a high percentage of losing it if you're going to get a, if you're gonna get a, uh, a muff snap. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, all right, so, you ready to go? They don't need more from me. We're going to get your email. Get your email.